Tonight our special guest is music journalist Gary Steele. Gary has a passion for music and a passion for writing. He's been subjecting the New Zealand public to his withering opinions on music and pop culture since 1978 in newspapers and magazines such as Auckland's Metro. Gary Steele! Good evening, Brad. How are you, Gary? Very well, good. Pretty tired with a five-week-old baby in the house. But a five-week-old so baby. You'll excuse any senior moments I may have. And yeah. you've just had a baby. Have indeed. Well, uh, well let's my, my wife. Well, yeah, yes. Yeah. What, what's your <laughs> she wife's, did all the hard What's work. your wife's name? She's Yoko. Yoko. And as you know, she broke up the Beatles, but yeah. um, but but it's not the same Yoko. <laughs> <laughs> not the same Yoko. <laughs> is she Japanese? Is she? she is. Oh, yes. Wow, yes. that's amazing. So we've got a little half cast. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank goodness for for the modern world. It yeah. won't have quite the tough time it might have twenty or thirty years ago. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's uh, now tell me. Um, what made you, uh, at the age of 55, decide to have a baby? Oh, I grew up, I think. Mm. I think that's the thing about, you know, our generation mm. is that, you know, the baby boomers, at least in my case, extended adolescence mm. through decades, you know, yeah. of obsession about music and culture. Yeah. And uh, really nothing else existed. Mm. And suddenly I think what happened was that I got married and and, um, you know, I started taking on a few more responsibilities and yeah. I moved out to the country and, and uh, I started reali realising that there was life outside <laughs> of music and culture. And, and oh. <laughs> you know, it started just, just it taking on, on a different perspective. And than the baby's the five weeks old. Five weeks old, oh, yes, yes, wow. and I've hardly slept last night. So, so you're up at night with me. the bottle, <laughs> the uh, bottle and feeding the baby. <laughs> uh, it's, no, the, the 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 baby's focus is very much on breasts yeah. at the moment, yeah. um, <laughs> but so I'm not much use in that regard. <laughs> uh, now, how old is your wife? She's not 55. She's is 43. She? So 43. Yep. Well, that was yep. yes. so she's done well. You had mm. to do it now. Or <laughs> <laughs> time was sticking by. Wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Now let's get back to uh, the main thing that uh, Gary Steele is on our program tonight because we're going to talk about um, your wonderful career in New Zealand as a rock writer. Uh, quite a few rock writers, haven't we? Two or three in New Zealand f that have made a good name. Look, um, there have Russell been... Russell Bailey, there's Graham Reed. There have been many rock writers over the years, but most of them do it as a sort of a writer passage. You know, mm. junior writer in the newsroom, oh, you do that music crap, yeah. you know. And they do it for a year and they move on to, to exactly. politics or something else. Mm. In my case, I was a music mad person mm. who was a junior sub-editor um, in 1978 and you know when when the opportunity came up, up of course I just jumped yeah. at it yeah. you know uh, it was everything I wanted what do you hear when you hear music oh colors and colors and and patterns mm. you know to me it's it is about music it's not about you know Bob Dylan wheezing on a little harmonica and singing a bunch of lyrics I I could listen to just instrumental stuff. Mm. You know, for me, I was thinking about this the other day, I grew up, there are two really important records for me, I grew up with um, playing to death my dad's copy of Spike Jones Hi-Fi and Spooktacular, yeah. Hi-Fi and Spooktacular. Spike Jones, yeah. And uh, also um, a, a very early um, 1960s LP of um, Dr. Seuss, Green Eggs and Ham. That was my first exposure to jazz because yeah. it had a, you know, apart from the rhyming couplets, mm. there was this cool jazz soundtrack mm. to it, and and um, you know that that really um, meant that mm. when when I was old enough to get into my big sister's music, which mm. was you know Janis what Joplin, The Doors, yeah, doors. Jimi Hendrix, yeah. The Who, and all of that. Um, I, I had this in the background, you know, and and um, so I was, at, when, what happened really, this was the late 60s, you know, I was eight, eight or nine or ten, and my big sister, you know, she's five years older than me, she's really cool, she's getting into all this <laughs> stuff, man, and this music, the psychedelic explosion, you know, yeah. and what was happening was that, um, that there was this incredible explosion of uh, in society with this music mm. and very much amplified loud electric guitars you know very loud screaming women Janis Joplin and um, it, it was free love we're going to change society so, and the music what was great about it was that um, it it wasn't just rhythm and blues 
um, you know, it wasn't just the Beatles copying or the Stones mm. um, copying Chuck Berry. It was a, an amalgam of a history of blues, jazz, and classical, a European tradition, and um, all sorts of other musics, all in together, you know, old folk music, and all in together, and then that went from psychedelia through to progressive rock in the early to mid 70s mm. and got more and more complicated yeah. and I loved it. I just yeah. loved so it. So you heard all this and there was a sense of excitement in you. Um, you were hearing something and it was doing something more to you than it did to the average person because the average person is a rite of passage, heard their generation, then they moved on to others. But you. You became a rock writer, but was it like a drug? Was it a powerful effect music? Or? Oh, absolutely. Mm. I mean, it, um, you know, for me, music, m music meant that, you know, it was such a powerful drug that mm. I was never really tempted to um, get into drugs. Yeah. Um, and, you and yet know, that was part of the culture, wasn't it? It was yeah, part of the yeah. culture, but, um, but you know, um, I, I think what I did in early age was listen to my hero, mm. Frank Zappa, yeah. and you know, he said you know, he wasn't into drugs, although you know, there, was, there was a little bit of a contradiction yeah. because he was a chain smoker. <laughs> <laughs> but, he was into nicotine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, um, I, I think, um, yeah, it, it, was, it was just something that completely filled me mm. as an adolescent. I also loved writing. The, the whole beat poetry thing that happened in the, the late 50s and early 60s, then that, that really flew into the early rock writing in America. And there, there, there was a magazine called Cream in the uh, early 70s, which a very famous writer called Lester Bangs presided over it. And uh, it was a different tact than Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone covered things very, um, very seriously, factually, for the most part. Mm. And Cream had these crazy, what they call gonzo rock writers, mm. and they really wrote in a beat poetry type of style. Mm. And, and it was more about them and their expression of mm. what they loved than just going blah, blah, blah. Did you ever want to be a musician yourself? Did I toyed with the toyed idea. Toyed with the idea. You know, but when I realized I, I I, I couldn't really be Jim Morrison yeah. and I couldn't really wear leather pants with no undies <laughs> and feel comfortable. I kind of gave up on that idea. <laughs> so um, the only thing left was to write about it. I, yeah. you know, I loved writing. Yeah. I, I was always, you know, top in my class mm. in school for writing and that was the only thing I was yeah. ever any good at. Yeah. And so it was just natural. Oh, I love music. I love yeah. writing. I'll write about music, you know. So, so, what did, so if you saw a group called The Who and you were sitting there and suddenly they started smashing their guitars on stage, et cetera, et cetera, um, the average person just said, talk, talked about The Who being destructive and that, but you would want to, what, what, what would be your angle to that happening on stage? How would you try and... I, I think that um, what, what a, you know, what a, I guess I was coming from a creative writing point of view, mm. and and back then, God knows. But but the point of it was that um, rather than being just an audience, you were participating in the creative process. Yeah, that's wonderful. Rather and than just sitting there and watching, you wanted to be co-creative. Part of it. Yeah. And what they say is that when you listen to music, mm. a listener. Uh, is is making up their own interpretations of the sound when they're listening to the music. Um, it's not just a passive process, you know. There's a certain amount of creativity in enjoying mm. music, and everybody hears something slightly different. Yeah. It's not, you know, just yeah. what that person's doing up there. Yeah, yeah. They interpret it in different ways. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's where I was coming from, is trying to articulate some of that excitement about what was happening and, and in terms of sound sculptures as well you know not just um, s some guy with a with a lyric um, it, it was in, uh, trying to to get across the idea that what we're listening to here is vibrations through space and time yeah. I mean that's pretty cool yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't see it that way but <laughs> <laughs> now what about pop music uh, what do you feel about pop music well I, I think that pop music is great when it's art and mm. I think that um, you know 99% mm. of the time pop music is is 
just uh, crap, mm. uh, really just crap. But 1% of the time... It can be wonderful. It can mm. uh, be the exception mm. that makes the rule. And, and, you know, you look at something like, you know, some of the Spectre hits mm. in the 60s or some of the Beach Boys' best work or Mums and Papas, you know, that kind of late, mm. mid to late 60s, those productions, the, the, the level of songwriting and the melodies and the harmonies all working together in amazing mm. accord. Um, nothing beats that, yeah. that level, um, that, that combination of uh, business and commercial sus and art. So it all, you, it's all together. Now, I always ask our viewers because it's, it's it sort of puts them in two camps, Beatles or Rolling Stones? Oh, you, oh Beatles. The Beatles? Any really? day, yeah, ah. yeah. Over the Rolling Stones? Oh, absolutely, Now, I, yeah. that's, that's the opposite to what I thought you'd say <laughs> because I thought you'd be a Rolling Stones Are you a Rolling Stones no, guy? No, I'm a, Beatle, <laughs> I'm a Beatles fan, but, you know, the, the, the gritty... Um, you know, no, that, as opposed to the pop. I would say the Rolling Stones come from an aesthetic that is essentially roots music. Mm -hmm. You know, very, very blues derived. And to me, the Beatles, as soon as they went psychedelic, especially, were all they, they were very much interested in experimental music, the music that was coming out of the electronic music, music studios in uh, in in uh, uh, Germany, and uh, they were very interested in what. Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention were doing in America in, in 1965-66. Um, you know, a, a sort of a, a style of music mm. that you can hear on their, their White Album, you know, the self-titled album from 1968, where there's a song called uh, Revolution Number no. 9 that, that, that is all cut up tapes yeah. and it's backward stuff yeah. in it. And, and um, wonderful, wonderful, you know, it's just about sound and patterns of sound. And um, it's it's not just can I use the word wank? It's yeah. not just wankery. It's yeah. it's you know you, you can listen to this piece of music over and over and derive some emotional and musical satisfaction from it. You continued to be uh, a rock writer. You know you developed your skills and you you know you're sitting here today as still a rock writer. As every five years it changes and you still had the ability to listen to the next generation's music and still analyze it. How did you do that? I mean, I would find that difficult. Well, I think there are a couple of things. I, I kind of, uh, I've taken a leaf from the, the famous British DJ, John Peel, who, um, I mean, he's dead now, but he, but he, um, he, his attitude was that he was a fan and, and he always tried to live in the moment. and. Uh, he, I think, died when he was about mid-60s, and, uh, and he was still getting into contemporary mm. music. And um, even though he came up through the era in the, in the late 60s. So I think that's one thing, just to try to zone in to what's current. Now, but he, well, here's an example. For me, the Beatles were wonderful in 1963. Mm. By 1970-something, I'm not sure, um, probably the 80s, 90s, a group called Oasis comes along, who are the Beatles of their mm. day. Mm. I couldn't see anything in Oasis's music, mm. and so. But you, but, but I you can't were, either. Oh, I agree can't. with you one hundred percent. I thought the whole Britpop thing was mostly crap. Yeah. Um, there was one group that came out of it, Blur, mm. who had some quite you know nicely crafted mm. songs. But you still had to but, go along and and write. Yes, but uh, I but I but I dissed them to use a rap. A rap oh, did word, you? Oh, you know. it's interesting. Um, yeah. You know, I'm fairly well known for my fractious reviews. Yeah. You know, I mean, I say what I think, and uh, you know, a lot of uh, so-called modern musical movements haven't been worth much. And uh, the other thing is that that most modern pop is a recapitulation on what happened before, mm. and uh, you know. When when a 15-year-old hears some new music, that, that'll be new to them. Yes, it is. But, but the thing about having a legacy of recorded music the way we do is that we can go, well, you know, this latest record, sorry, Sonny, but that sound, that guitar sound, is exactly like this record that, that <laughs> I've got from 1969, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. And that the way they combine it with something else mm. might, be, might be new. Mm. But it, it actually does. It's nothing, it's not a, 
a lack of creativity in the in in the modern artists or or, or, or musicians so much as the fact that we have this building up of material resources due to recordings mm. that you know there's only so many ways to to write a melody <laughs> yeah. or, or write a lyric uh, <laughs> now what about today gary uh, you're, you're writing you're reviewing today's music uh as a 55 year old is it a is it a chore or is, is it a joy i think when when editors let me write about what i want to write mm -hmm. it's a joy you know when they try to get me to 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 uh you know to review the latest Beyonce record. I, yeah. I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of, uh, you know, do I <laughs> How really do I do have this to? Yeah. But, but, um, but, you know, I, the thing is, I actually like listening to music I don't like yeah. uh, because it's <laughs> instructive, you know. <laughs> As they say, know your enemy, you know. <laughs> and at the know end, your enemy. <laughs> and at the end of the day, to quote John Key, yeah. it's, um, yeah. It's 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 all instructive, you yeah. know. It's all and, uh, you've got a wonderful <laughs> attitude. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing and the thing is, um, yeah. but the thing the thing is, I've just written best of the year for Metro. And I've been Metro's music critic yeah. for fourteen years, yeah. and uh, I don't know how much longer. <laughs> but um, you know, two of the records I've written about are old dudes who are still doing amazing experimental music, mm. and. Um, um, one of them I can't remember because I'm having a senior moment. But the yeah. other one, <laughs> the other one is um, Scott Walker from. You remember the Walker Brothers? Oh, he was a wonderful singer. Wasn't he's he? yeah. 72 now, mm. and he's made the most experimental m record of his career mm. with a very strange avant metal band called Sun O, yeah. and it's amazing. Really, it's the yeah. most bizarre he's got this operatic <laughs> Scott Walker voice yeah. and the music's as heavy as yeah. and um, you know that shows that oh, Leonard Cohen yes you know wonderful he's, isn't he he's still writing yeah. um, you know he's what 80 or 81 now oh, and wonderful. you know he's writing lyrics that mm -hmm. are as good as anything he's ever written but the point is he's not just a nostalgia act yeah. and I think that's what's important yeah. My so, so well, to finish off, uh, I mean, uh, Gary, I could talk to you for hours. Honestly, there's so much to discuss, but we've got a we've got a show here, and it's we're all bounded by time. But um, uh, well, if they want more of me, they can go to my website, which yeah. which doctor dot yeah. co dot nz, which and, uh, dot co dot nz, and it's a yeah. it's a, it's a technology and music site, and I put a lot of my old sort of uh, you know transcripts of old yeah. interviews from the 80s and 90s on there. Um, and uh, so it's got a lot of good stuff. Yeah. Uh, now, Gary, f f a young father, 55, with a five-week-old baby. What's what's the future for Gary Steele? Keep on writing. Um, will you be doing this till it's all over? Writing reviews about music. I think um, um, I think that really uh, the web is the way forward, mm -hmm. and. Uh, so I'll be de developing my websites, um, which, which doctor, which, which doctor, and, Dr. and uh, my health and wellness, vegetarian-based health and wellness site called Doctor Feel Good. Oh, okay. Is, uh, is another one. And you've been a vegetarian and, uh, all your life. I I've been a vegetarian I'm, from I'm, the age of eighteen, which is mm. when I started writing about music. Really. So you haven't kept um, McDonald's in business, have you? No, <laughs> no. I've got this. This, you know, it's 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 fairly well uh, researched that uh, you know in terms of the environmental future mm. of the planet that vegetarianism makes a lot of sense mm. my brain needs to be re-engineered doesn't it to uh, think think the right way uh, it's really easy to do i mean there's this incredible i don't know if you've been to the little bird on bakery in ponson beach which no. is going it's just huge it's yeah. packed every day and it's raw vegan food really it's based around raw vegan food okay what's it called and, the, uh, the little bird on bakery the little and, bird uh, on bakery, on bakery. Yeah. Yeah. and she's got her own cookbook out and she she gets you know, front page of Viva mm. cooking, uh, Viva magazine and the Herald and that sort of thing. So it's, you know, there's a real revival in mm. food and in interest. It's not just sort of this 1970s hippie yeah. mung bean idea anymore <laughs> and, you know, lentil <laughs> slop. <laughs> so I think um, that's the future, you know, internet, websites, vegetarianism mm. and uh, future of music, who knows, because mm. it's just, you know, it's, it's it's getting harder and harder for musicians to make money. Mm. Um, obviously, touring helps if you're big enough to get the crowds along. Mm. But for from records, 
it's yeah. harder and harder. Yeah. And albums don't sell what they used to. Yeah. People don't really have the concept of albums anymore. No, that was great, but, wasn't uh, it? An album came out. It was a big occasion. Albums. Wasn't it? It's a beautiful format, you yes. know. 20 minutes nice aside, yes. 40 minutes, perfect yeah. listening time, yeah. a sequence of songs <laughs> to, to make your world a brighter place. Place, you you know. make me nostalgic. <laughs> Those good times. Oh, Gary, look, um, absolutely fabulous talking to you. And uh, once again, we'll mention to our viewers, if you want to keep up with Gary, witchdoctor.co.nz. And uh, you'll be, uh, with the five-year-old baby, you'll be continuing to write all about music and uh, what's happening on the music Absolutely, scene. and yeah. she's going to grow up in a Frank Zappa fan or, <laughs> or else. Let's say this little baby grows up to hate Frank Zappa. That's going to be terrible, isn't well, it? Well, as long <laughs> as she's not a Miley Cyrus fan, I'll be happy. <laughs> Gary, <laughs> pleasure to meet you. Thanks. <laughs>